finally, HTC has revealed the resolution of the HTC Vive Cosmos. It's 1,440 pixels times 1,700 pixels per eye. Now that is not the 2K times 2K resolution that we'd hope for, but in this video, I'm going to make a case why the Vive Cosmos could still be the most exciting VR headset of 2019. And all of this goodness is coming up. Hi and welcome to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang. If this is your first time here, if you're just as excited about VR and AR as me, then subscribe now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. Finally, HTC has revealed the display resolution and the display technology of their upcoming HTC Vive Cosmos. And as you can tell here, it's an LCD display and we have a combined resolution of 2880 times 1,700 pixels. So per eye, it's 1,440 times 1,700 pixels. Now, this is not the 2K times 2K resolution that most of us had hoped for and that the HP Reverb actually sports. But I still believe that the HTC Vive Cosmos could be the most exciting VR headset of 2019. And let me make a case for it. So yes, as compared to the HP Reverb, we don't have that super high resolution, but we most probably, and well, we have to check that of course, and I will check that, we will not have those Mura and display problems. Mura is a problem of the HP Reverb where areas with the same color in VR will have different kind of brightnesses, which is a problem if you have like unicolor scenes. Now, as compared to the Rift S and Valve Index, actually the Vive Cosmos has a higher resol resolution than both of these headsets. As compared to the Rift S, actually quite a lot. So the Rift S sports a resolution of 1280 times 1440 pixels and the HTC Vive Cosmos has a resolution of 1440 times 1700 pixels. Now, that is more and the, the Rift S already does look good. It's already a nice picture. So if you think that the Cosmos will even have a high resolution that will most probably look really nice. And of course, I'm going to compare everything here on the channel. Now for the Valve Index, which is coming out really, really soon, it sports a, resol a resolution of 1440 times 1600 pixels. So less resolution than the Vive Cosmos. And this resolution is most probably even spread out over a bigger FOV. So as we know for the, for the Valve Index, it has an FOV of probably around 130. And for the Cosmos, well, they haven't said anything, but I assume it's going to have the 110 degrees. FOV. So if that is the case, then the high resolution will even be spread out over a smaller FOV. And this would mean we have a sharper picture with the Cosmos. Of course, then always you would have to think about what is more important for you, the bigger FOV or the higher resolution. And well, that will totally depend on you. Now, what else does the Vive Cosmos have going for itself? Well, we have a refresh rate of 90 frames per second and the Rift S only has 80. However, I must tell you that I have no problem whatsoever with the 80 Hertz of the Rift S. And well, I don't think that in direct comparison, you can tell a difference. Now, the Valve Index even has 120 FPS or Hertz if you're looking at the panel, at the refresh rate of the panel. So, I haven't seen it myself and just then I can tell you what kind of difference it makes. But well, 90 frames per second and 90 hertz, the refresh rate of the panel. Then for the tracking as what the track, tracking is concerned. Now we have six cameras as opposed to the five cameras of the Rift S. So if you simply would argue by the number of cameras that you have here with the Vive Cosmos, it's well, you would think that the tracking might be better of that of the Rift S, which only has five. But well, I will 
check that out for you and I will see if the tracking of the Vive Cosmos really is better than that of the Rift S. Now compare this to the Valve Index. For the Valve Index, you would need the base stations, the Lighthouse base stations. So for the Lighthouse tracking, it's without a doubt the best tracking as compared to this inside out tracking of the Vive Cosmos and the Rift S. However, there might be quite a lot of people who would prefer inside out tracking because they can simply bring the Vive Cosmos to their friends. They can bring it around and it's much more mobile than the solution of the Valve Index. So I believe there's going to be some people who would prefer this kind of tracking solution. Now let's have a look at the controllers and actually they don't look too shabby. Actually they do remind us a bit of the touch controllers of the Rift S and of the Quest with this ring here. Also we have one thumbstick and two buttons and one extra button. And an interesting part of this controller is actually that we have two triggers. Now, since nobody has actually ever used those controllers, we can only guess that this might be a great experience. And well, of course, I'm going to test this out here on the channel, but without a doubt, this looks much better than the Vive wants that we had before. And I think it might be a very similar experience to what we see with the Oculus Touch controllers. Another interesting point that I want to mention where the Vive Cosmos distinguishes itself from the Rift S and from the Valve Index is that it seems to be the only headset that is built with 5G in mind, with our 5G future in mind. When in a couple of years all of us are streaming our content from the 5G cloud, it seems like that this headset might be able to get the content via a 5G mobile phone or some kind of upgrade kit as well. Now, this is something that was teased in, in, January, in January at the press conference that HTC gave, but since then we haven't heard from, from that. So I believe this is not going to come with this version of the headset, but this might be some kind of upgrade kit. And well, it's not bad that if that moment comes that the 5G future is really there that we could simply upgrade this headset and have a 5G VR headset. So overall, I believe that this could be an amazing headset, but I also see two big problems and these two problems are price and customer service. Let's talk about price first. Unfortunately, HTC has not yet revealed the price, but we know that it's going to be under $900. So far, they've confirmed the information that I had received. So as you know, I received the information that is going to cost 899 euros in the Eurozone, which would mean that it might cost around 800 US dollars. Now, of course, HTC is competing against the Rift S, which cost $399. So I believe even they wanted to price it at $799 probably they will price it at $749. Now, this is just my speculation. I believe it's going to be around $749. And I believe that they're going to give you several months of Vive Port Infinity for free with this package. Now, let's assume that this price is true, $749 and probably in Euroland, let's say 849 euros. What would I think about this kind of price? Well, without a doubt, it's a tough call because the Rift S is so cheap at $399. However, with these specs that we have here, we have a better device than the Rift S. So the Cosmos will look better than the Rift S. Probably tracking will also be better and we have a better audio solution. So I believe for people who, who want to have the best quality in terms of visuals and that don't want to go for the Valve Index because they don't want to have the Lighthouse tracking because they want to bring their VR headset to friends or for example, then I believe these people are going to go for that $749 Vive Cosmos. For Lots of other people, I believe they will simply simply go for the Rift S since it already delivers great VR 
for a very, very reasonable price. So it's really, really tough to compete against the Rift S since Oculus can simply subsidize the device so much that it's so affordable. But I still think that there is going to be a market if the device is priced indeed at around $749. The second big problem that I see with the HTC Vive Cosmos is the Vive customer service because the Vive customer service is plain terrible. I personally made lots of bad experiences and I made videos about these experiences. Now, did anything get better after I posted these videos? Unfortunately, no. I still, until this very day, receive emails from disgruntled customers who turn to me as their last hope and last resort. So until now, still, the customer service is terrible. And actually, just recently, I had a problem with my Vive base stations, where the base stations, which is not even two years old, didn't work anymore. And HTC Vive, they did not replace it for me for free, but instead they asked for me to pay to repair that that device. So still until now, the customer service is really, really bad. But now I really want to hear from you. If the device costs $749, comes with three months of free Vive Pod Infinity, would you go for it even though the customer service is known to be bad? Please do let me know in the comment section below. If yes, tell me why. And if no, also tell me why and tell me for which other headset you're going to go for. I'm really very much looking forward to read what you have to say about the Vive Cosmos. Now, that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you've not yet subscribed to MRTV yet, do so now and click on the bell button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. That's it. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.